What's going on everybody? It is Triple Crown 24 back today doing a different kind of video than what I normally do. Today I'm going to show you my spreadsheet that I use to track my Miguel Cabrera collection. Now this is for a player collection, but a lot of what I'm going to show you today can apply to a lot of different collections regardless of what you collect or who you collect and the means in which you collect as well. So. I highly recommend using your own spreadsheet just because if you rely on an online database, although they are great, like I use, I'll show you this one right here, I use a uh, trading card database, that's my go-to personally uh, for tracking my collection, but I use that more so as a reference as, and as a backup, uh, where this one right here, it's kind of one that I can customize to my own will, I can put in certain stats that maybe I find more interesting to me or for my collection or for my knowledge on what I want to add. So that's kind of why I want to do this. I thought this might be helpful. I'm going to go over some of the formulas I use as well because that will save you a lot of time and aggravation um, when you're building your spreadsheet, trust me. Uh, I've, I've learned that the hard way over the years. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'm also doing this again because of my contest where we had to recreate an old video. I shot a video somewhat like this a long time ago, but never uploaded it because it was a really bad video, uh, to be honest. So hopefully the quality is much better today. So here's kind of a look, and I will scroll through here to kind of show you how I do it. So this is a list of all of my Miguel Cabrera cards, and I'll kind of just do an overview of the spreadsheet here. Um, so that's a piece of it. So how I do it is I do it by year. I'll do it by brand and then card name and usually for the card name it will vary from place to place. You might call it something different than say Trading Card Database does. Usually I will go by how they have it listed. Um, some people use Beckett, some people use Baseball Cardpedia, Cardboard Connection sometimes has it as well. Whatever you want to use is, is completely up to you. I usually stick to Trading Card Database to keep it consistent. I have the card number here. The numbering of the card, I don't do print run, so it's only if it is serial numbered and you can see what they are, serial number two here. If the card is graded, I have that listed here just because uh, my graded cards go in a different spot in my collection, so that way I can keep track of where they are at, and also that will come in handy with some stats later. If the card has an autograph, if it has a relic, and if it has a manufactured relic, and the way that I just do that is mark it if it has it. I just put a little Y there for yes, and there are different ways to sort that as well. So that's kind of the overview of that page right there. So how I have it sorted is I do it in alphabetical order, um, going by card name. So the cards aren't really necessarily listed by parallels. So let me scroll down here to the bottom. There's a little bit too far. Uh, let's go with 2019 tops. So here's what I have for 2019 tops. And as you can see, this is listed by alphabetical order. So normally for a set, uh, you would usually put the base card at the top. Um, in this case, I have the base card second below the 150th anniversary parallel that you see right here. So that's kind of the way that I do it to track it. There are ways that you can change it around and customize it, but I choose to do it in alphabetical order. These are only cards that I have, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. I just find it's easier to do it that way, but there are certain way, ways that you can do it. You can copy the entire uh, checklist from somewhere and put it in. For Cabrera as an active player, um, it's more so a collection that is always growing. Like There are always new cards coming out for him still, so I choose not to keep track of all the stuff on here just because I'd have to constantly be adding new cards into it that... Um, in all reality, I probably will never get a hold of like some of those one of ones. So I just choose to keep track of the ones that I actually do have. Um, and then I have it sorted by year, and then by brand, by card name, and by card number. So how I go through and sort it, it's instead of scrolling all the way down, like I'll show you how long it takes to so say I wanted to sort all these. Here's how long it takes if you scroll down like this. As you can see, that's just way too long and if you overshoot it then you're gonna to have to go back and start again so what I'll do is I will select this whole row and then I'll hold down the shift key and I'll click on each of these letters at the top so this keeps all of them selected if you don't hold down the shift key it will switch 
um, which column is selected. So it's nice to be able to select them all at once. I go to data, I go to sort range. Um, this is a key thing here, you wanna select data has a header row. If you don't, then the headers will be sorted in there. So this will become a line down there and you don't want that. So then it will uh, pull it up by what you have your headers named as. So I sort them A to Z, you can do it differently if you want to. And I just, this is the uh, priorities in which it sorts by. I hit sort and it will sort it. It's already sorted uh, from the last time I updated it, but that's just something you can do. Also, one thing I do for the viewing is that I have this top uh, line here, my header row frozen. And you can see here what that does is that it scrolls along with it. So say that I would unfreeze it. So I go to view, freeze, no rows. So I have my header up here and I can see what goes with it. But say I scroll down and all of a sudden you see these Y's, but you're not really sure. Do they go with the autographs? Do they go with the relics? And you can tell, I mean, this says stitches right here. So that probably gives you an idea. That's just going to be a regular relic. Uh, but it is nice to have that. So if you want to freeze that top row, that header, so that it follows you around, you go to view, go over to freeze, and then one row. Uh, maybe you have two header rows. You can choose two rows. Uh, there's ways to change it as well where you can have more than two, I believe. So that is kind of how I do that. Also, the card numbers, unless it is just the regular number, what Excel, or in this case, Google Docs, which is what I prefer to use, a lot of the formulas are completely the same, just they might call some of these little uh, keys here, or these little sort tools, different names, but they are the same thing. Uh, here what you can do, just because it will normally put these types of numbers in the, I guess these are technically letters, but these card numbers um, on the left side, while these regular numbers are on the right side, you want to keep them all the same. You can just click on the whole row and uh, right align, left align, whatever you want to use. You can also center align if you choose to do so. That's just kind of the way that I do it. You can adjust uh, the length of your cells by just oops, uh, just dragging this along here. And that will adjust it if you need to have more space or maybe you want to shrink some of the cells, like for example, the year. I don't need this too big just because it's always going to be four digits, so I usually keep this one kind of small. And that way I can keep my entire uh, pieces of data within the window that I use to look at all my stuff. So that is my first page. So we'll move into my stats now. And this is where some of the formulas really come in handy. So this is where I keep track of my total cards and you can see right here, I use a count function. This one is the count A. So there are a lot of different ways that you can use it to count your cards. For me personally, what I do is I count it by the card name. So if this cell is filled in on any particular row, it will add to it. And that's what the count A does. Uh, basically, the A means that it will take any alphabetical or alphanumeric value. And if it detects that in any of these, it will count it. So if one of these was blank. Like, for example, if I took out this orange parallel, as you can see, it would go down to nine. My count would go down to 900, even though the rest of this is filled out. So I go ahead and I put it back in. And all of a sudden, I'm back to 901. Uh, the way that I have this set out to is that I coded it so that I have the range from uh, row number two all the way to row 10,001. So that will cover my first 10,000 cards I get in my collection if I ever surpass 10,000, if I ever do. Um, can you imagine? Um, anyways, if I ever do pass 10,000, then I'll have to go in and change that to adjust and account for the additional rows but for right now the size of my collection this is a perfectly acceptable range and then I can also um, drag this down if I wanted to copy this formula down across uh, these other ones right here and in order to do that I want to be able to keep this range so I'll use what's called an anchor and that's this little dollar sign right here so let's say that I want to keep this specific range right here I want it to go from row two to row 10,001. If I copy this down and I don't have this anchor here, it will go to row three to 10,002. That way this first line, so in this case, um, this first row, let me scroll up here, this one, this card won't be counted anymore in that second line of data and I don't want that to happen. So I keep the anchors right here. You can also do it by column if you're going across left to right. In this case, I'm not going across columns so I don't need the anchor but you'll want to be able to use that. And I understand a lot of these principles are pretty basic, 
Um, for some of you guys who use Excel pretty often, I know there's a lot of Excel wizards out there, but uh, hopefully this is more so geared towards those who don't have as much experience using Excel or want to try to start um, some kind of spreadsheet to organize their collection. So here's something else you can do. Uh, this is an my autographs one. You can use count if. And the way that I do it is I just designate if it's an autograph. There is a way to um, distinct a on-card autograph and a sticker autograph that you could do. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute with a different strategy. But what I do here is I go back and I select the card list sheet with the same range and then I put in parentheses Y. So what it will do is it will only count if there is a Y in this column. So if I only had this selected range here for it to count, it would only count this card right here because it has the Y right here. It is an autograph card. So that is the way that I keep track of that. And again, here I have it with relics. Uh, the count if function is really great if you want a specific criteria. You can assign it a certain value or a certain um, range of values. So you could do, like for example, less than 20. If you're looking for uh, cards that have a print run of less than 20, you could just uh, put that in there instead, and that would sort it that way. I use one of ones. For example, here this one is more specific where it will count anything in this column right here, the numbering column, that has a 1 in it, just a 1. So that is how I keep track of that. Graded cards, this, this one is just a count A because I have different types of slabs. I have a BGS slab in there, not just PG, uh, excuse me, PSA. So that is how I kind of keep track of that. And then numbered cards is basically anything that is numbered right along here. Um, again, I used a count A, which works here even for the numbers as well. It just means that the cell is not empty. So that is how I do that. And then by year, what I'll do is this is pretty, uh, pretty nice here. And this is where the copy down thing kind of comes into play. So this will take uh, the range of all of these right here from A2 to A10,001. So this column right here, starting with row two, and it will count up all the years. So if I want to know how many cards I have from a specific year, that's what it does. I also have it set up where what I could do is I could hard code this to say 2000. So that will mean it will read this and it will say, okay, any uh, data value that says 2000 here, it will count it. But what I like to do is instead of doing that, I reference this cell. So I use a cell reference of D2. And that way, if I needed to change this, say that I wanted to make this year 1999, I change that and now all of a sudden it will count um, all the cards that are 1999. So if you make an error or something or you want to add something in, uh, that way it's easier to do. And then I don't anchor this one because I want to be able to copy it down. So I can take this formula because I want to use it for all of the years from 2000 until now. So I do that, copy it down, and now that formula, as you can see, is applied all the way across the board. We'll keep track of all the different years. So that is kind of how I do that. Um, really quickly, this is my account log. So this is just a little log I use to keep track of my uh, number of Cabrera cards. This one is not, uh, doesn't have any formulas with it. It's just hard coded. Just a little kind of a journal entry thing for me. So I won't spend too much time there, but I figured I'd go ahead and show it off. So there are a couple of different things that you can do as well if you want to sort this, and this some of these might be more useful uh, for player collectors, some of these might be more useful for set collectors, but I'll show them off right here, is there's a couple different ways that you can sort certain things. So say that you wanted to uh, do it by brand, so what you can do is I'll type in, I won't type it in, I will go over here and I will select this entire thing and I'll uh, hit copy on it and then I will paste it in. So now all I have here is all of these different brands of cards. Now as you can see, there's gonna be some duplicates in there. Like for example, there's a lot of this Donra Senef right here. I only wanna count that one time because I'm trying to, um, how should I put this? I only want to display how many cards I have from that once. So what I can do is I can go to data, and this is some features that are really cool on Google Sheets. I'm not familiar if they're on Excel or not, but this is remove duplicates. I can hit here, so it will take all of this right here, and it will 
get rid of anything that is um, basically it repeats the same brand more than once. So as you can see here, there are 145 unique rows remaining. So out of all the cards in my collection, um, there's 901 rows of cards. So now I have 145 unique brands that I have cards from. So then what I can do is I can use data. I can sort this range. I want to make sure I denote that has a header row. And now all of a sudden I have everything sorted by brand. And then from there what I can do, I can use a count if function. And then what I'll do is I will select my range. So I'll go over to card list and I will go ahead and select B2 on here. And I'll go from B2 to B10001. I want to copy this down for the remainder of the brands. So I will go ahead and do that. So now I need to do my criterion. And for that, I'm going to use Bazooka. Whoops. I'm going to make a reference to this cell right here. I'm messing up a little bit. Um, so we'll reference G2. There we go. So I have two cards that are from the Bazooka brand across all different years here. And say that I wanted to change this. Uh, say that I wanted to make this flagship tops. Now you can see I have 152 cards from flagship tops. So that is uh, one way to do all of that. Another thing you can do, um, that one is probably more so useful for set or team collectors, I would say. This one might be better for set or player collectors is let's say that I want to see who Cabrera has a card with. And the way that I do my uh, stuff is that if it's a multiplayer card, I try to denote the player that they are with. So for example, Mike Trout is a player that might be of interest. How many cards do I have that picture Mike Trout with Miguel Cabrera? So what I can do is say I'll do this, I'll have name. And then I will select Mike Trout. I'll go ahead and just type that in. And what I can do is I can do a count if, and I will uh, go ahead over here, select my range. We'll go C2 to C10,001. And go over here. Now, if I type in exactly Mike Trout like this, it's going to come up with a problem is that it's going to show I don't have any cards with Mike Trout, which is not true. So the reason it does that is because it is looking for the exact phrase of Mike Trout within this spreadsheet here. And as you can see, none of my card names are exactly Mike Trout. Uh, usually it will say like with Mike Trout. So what I'll do here is I will put in two asterisks on each side of Trout and now it ups my count to two. So what this will do is that if at any point in the card name phrase it has this sequence right here of Mike Trout, it will go ahead and put in a count for it, so it will count it. This is useful with uh, refractors, because sometimes they will be called um, X-fractors, which doesn't have the refractor name in it. They might be called diffractors in the case of high tech. So what I can do here is I just put in fractor, which will cover the entire gamut of different types of refractors. And as you can see, I have 61 different um, card names that have refractor in them. So that's kind of a neat little tip there to help you along with that. If you wanted to highlight those on here, like for example, let's say that I wanted to highlight uh, any of the cards that I have that have refractor in the name, what I can do is format and go into conditional formatting and say I'll use green as my color here. You can change uh, the name here. This will kind of give you a preview of what happens to it. So I will go to my selected range here, which is my full list of cards, and I can choose from these. So you can have text contains, this way you don't have to use the little star uh, thing that you have to use that I showed before. So I'm gonna go with text contains, and I'm gonna put in fractor as my um, little criteria. So any place where the word fractor is put in, you can see it now has it highlighted in green, so I can kind of go through and take a look at it. Some of my X-Fractors are in there, so those are counted in. Um, some various different ones, so uh, trying to get down to the high-tech cards so I can show you that those are counted as well. 
see these right here they're called diffractors I don't know why they call them that I, I guess maybe they diffract light or something but that way this is also um, counted in there so that is a neat little trick that you can use if maybe you want to highlight certain pieces of your collection overall um, so that's just kind of something that you can do to uh, go through and pick out different things if you're trying to sort different ways and look for different things or uh, see what you might have as, of a certain type of card that's kind of just uh, overall way to go ahead and do that for me this is the way that I have it set up um, you can change it to however you like using the formulas I have mentioned but I would say a good number of the formulas that I've set are really all that you need there's some more stuff that you can do that's a little bit more advanced uh, maybe I can do a follow-up video if you're interested in that uh, and as that pertains to like maybe the values of cards if you want to track or maybe you want to budget um, for your collection I certainly have stuff that I use for that as well but this is just more so for cataloging my own collection so let me know what you think down below if you have any uh, tips that you use on your collecting um, formatting for your spreadsheets feel free to share those I thought this might be beneficial or helpful or at least uh, maybe you're curious and uh, I've entertained you for the past 20 minutes or so or at least that's how long I think this video has gone on for uh, but thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.